YouTube, what's good? Zapas9 here, back in with another video. And once again, I sincerely apologize for not uploading consistently. I have been busy with school. Finals are coming up, so get off my ass. Um, I don't know why I said that, but I did. Um, so today, I am here to talk about something controversial, because controversy creates cash. And if you know me, I like wrestling, and so does my Skype guest with me, my good buddy, and yours too, Jerome. Just like we were talking off the air, we have Red Rooster and Mantar and... Mantar! Mantar, yeah, Bob Bitchum and Mr. Fusion and now Alien. It's like an endless cycle of words. It'll just never end. <laughs> David Fincher. David Fincher. <laughs> Greetings on YouTube. Thank you for watching another collaboration video with my buddy Alexander the Great. And yours truly, my boy J Money. And we're going to go over a segment. Before I go over what it is, thank you to Mr. Alex Meyer. Yes. For presenting us the 10 controversial uh, topics or segments in wrestling from Watch Mojo. Oh, yeah. When Alex Meyer showed us that, we were just like, oh, we have to do something that relates to this because this is going to be good. So we're going to go over what we consider to be the biggest, most controversial, most talked about topics in wrestling history. Alexander the Great, lead the way. Oh, there are a lot of... Um... Hello. Um, there are a lot of controversies in wrestling, um, I'm not going to lie. Coming up with a list, it's going to be a little tough, I thought. It was tough for me because you can only have ten. Yeah, with a few honorable mentions. Not a 58, 95,000 honorable mentions. If in case you don't know what we're talking about, folks, watch... The worst gimmicks of all time. Yeah, back to worst gimmicks back in <laughs> December? Yeah, it was last it was late last year. Was it October? You know I'm not sure what month it was, but I know it was during the fall. Yeah, probably it was. Um so yeah, um like every list, we have a few honorable mentions. <laughs> not fifty eight thousand like some people we know. Um Let's start out. So I guess I'll start out. Um, one that is on their list. It's in their top ten, but it's not in mine. Muhammad Hassan. Fuck that yeah. character, Muhammad Hassan. Oh Imagine my gosh. Undertaker at the Great American Bash. <laughs> Here he gets the last ride straight through the through the stage. Well, not only that, but the the his um his group. Shall I say? Oh, right, right. With the whole, uh, 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 on his knees, doing the whole, with the masks and everything. And how, that, yeah, when that, that whole segment aired, a couple days, when they, when, well, hold on, let me, let me rephrase that. Oh, Sorry yeah, again. that tragedy happened. Oh, yeah, the London, the London uh, subway bombing. The subway bombing. Oh, fuck. Talk about bad timing. Yeah, absolutely. Vince McMahon, what were you thinking? You could have waited... Couldn't have pushed it back a week or something? <laughs> Couldn't have pushed it back? But no. I guess yeah. not. Uh, next up, probably one of my all-time favorite Raw segments. Pillman's Got a Gun. That's also one of my honorable mentions. Pillman's Got a Gun. I love that segment. I, lo I don't know, what was it? Uh, I was like, okay, it was like, what, 1996? 96. 96. I was uh, 12... Yeah, about turning 12. When I'm watching it, I'm just like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> He's actually got a gun. When he pulled out that gun, it was like a Glock, and he caught that thing. I was just like, oh, man, this. I'm like, I was watching my mom. My mom was just looking at me. I'm just like, what's going on? <laughs> Your, mom Your mom watched it with you? Your mom watched it with you? Because she was a wrestling fan back then. When we were watching okay. it, we were just like, we're just like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> and then when he placed the gun, he was like, freeze, freeze. And I was like, Shh, you know, it goes in the snow. And we were just like, whoa. Wow. 
<laughs> we're like, wow. I love, I love that segment. I, I love it. It's one of my all-time favorite Raw segments. Even though the people behind the USA Network were being a bitch about Anal. it. Anal. Who cares? It's, it's yeah, TV. Yeah. It's just TV. Yeah. And... Yeah, Randy Orton Triple H take notes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And my last honorable mention... Well, it's not really a controversy, but back in the day, it might have been when um, Macho Man got bit by the snake. Oh. Remember that? Jake yeah. the Snake Roberts got... That was, uh, that was before Survivor Series. Um, yeah, you know, Jake pulls out that snake, and he's just... That snake's just nibble... Just, just gnawed oh. on him. I'm just like... Hmm. Oh, <laughs> you can see man. the bite marks and everything. Yeah, and the venom and all that stuff coming out of his freaking arm. Oh. And that whole thing latched onto him. They say it's been de-venomized. That's what it said according to the Survivor Series. But if, if he really was bitten, Macho Man would have been in. He would have been in the in the fucking hospital for yeah. weeks. So. But still, back. Imagine growing up in yeah. the. Imagine growing up back in these. I know you saw, back in the day. I'll bet. I, I remember. I was just like. A freaking uh, snake! I didn't know that he was capable of doing that. Jake Roberts, you're crazy, man. Yeah, he is. So, yeah, those are my honorable mentions. All right, here comes my 527,000. Okay, we already covered about uh, um, the Sandman's crucifixion in ECW. Hmm, who, who knows? Maybe that'll end up on okay. this later on. Uh, Brock Lesnar conquers the streak of The Undertaker. <laughs> That's Steve's number one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sh- um, an opposed, some, it's rumored, but Shawn Michaels and Vince McMahon's gay love affair. Dead serious. I wouldn't be surprised. I, I, I'm dead serious. Like, um, so true. The, the, the 2002, the plane ride from hell. Oh, my. To the USA. <laughs> Oh my god! Yes, fuck Goldberg trying to hook up with an attendee. Yeah, Ric Flair pulling his penis out. Yeah, uh, 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 Scott Hall drunk all over the fucking place. Yeah, Brock Lesnar, Kurt Hanning, Kurt Hanning, you know, was saying, "Hey, I can challenge you to a match," and they ended up in a fucking brawl. And they almost, they almost, <laughs> they almost went. The the they almost opened the escape door. <laughs> wow. Um. Michael P.S. Hayes trying to piss on yeah, Linda yeah. McMahon. Um, oops, hold on a second. I, uh, here we go. The 1992 sexual harassment scandal that involved... Pat Patterson. Terry Ga- uh, Garvin and Pat Patterson. Oh. Oh, yeah. Victory Road 2011 with Jeff Hardy. He's Still haven't forgiven him from that. He's such a great talent, and yet he shows up doing that shit. Oh, man. Still haven't forgiven him for that. <laughs> okay, um, not too many people are familiar with this, but, um, Sid Vicious stabbing Arn Anderson with scissors. Yeah. Never makes alcohol with wrestlers. No. He sleeps the bad things. <laughs> All right. The NWA World Title Tournament in 1994. Oh, Shane Douglas. The game became the franchise. <laughs> Through the belt. <laughs> Through the belt, he got the ECW. I was like, oh boy. And now many people are not familiar with this, but the Stephanie McMahon and Macho Man Randy Savage affair. Oh, yeah. Folks, if you want to know why... Macho Man has never been uh, talked about for a long years to come and everything. It's because of it this. And Vince McMahon sort of, you know, he figured out the rumor and the rest was history. He just, he just like, uh, um, oh, what's the right word? De- oh, he disowned, he disowned Macho Man for the WWE pretty much until the Hall of Fame. Yeah, but it was just a rumor. A rumor. Mm-hmm. Rumors are... Yeah, in one ear, out the other. But there you have it. I just went through them real quick. Those are the honorable mentions I have. Okay. Let's get right into the top 10. Shall we begin? Here we go. <laughs> All right. Number 10 for me is a absolute tragedy. 
And I, I'm saying this because it is. Oh, God. The, the Von Erich family curse. Oh, the Von Erichs. Yeah. You know what? Man, you know what it reminds that? me of? I swear to God. It, like, the Kennedys. Yeah. You can say that. <laughs> it does. That's exactly, like, what the Kennedys is to, like, you know, uh, uh, politics or... Or, or, or government mm -hmm. is what the Von Erichs is to professional wrestling. Exactly. It's exactly. Six. Five of the six Von Erich sons died before their father did. Yep. That's sad. The firstborn was at the age of six due to electrocution, which is yeah, sad. Uh, David. Hey, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. That was Jack. David died of um, drug overdose. Mike died of a drug overdose. OD. Of tranquil tranquilizers. Oh. Chris would shoot himself after a failed wrestling career. And the Texas Tornado, Kerry Von Erich, was addicted to pain kills after having his foot amputated and later shot himself. Sadly, none of these men would be over the age of 35. Oh, and the last four would become a focal point as to what many people would think happens to all former professional wrestlers. And Which, in case, I mean, are unfortunately true. Their age at 35 and 45, they either die of one of three things. Either suicide, OD, or heart, heart complications. And, it only, and, and, and if it's something else than that, it's extremely rare. Yeah. Yeah, it's something. One thing I'm surprised weird. who's still alive is like you know Roddy Piper and Ric Flair. Yeah, with all them stabbing incidents. Mm. Um, but yeah, if they were still alive, they would have given the McMahon's a run for their money. Oh fuck yeah, they would. They would have given the McMahon's a run for their money. They probably still, world class championship wrestling would have probably come back if they were still alive. Yeah. In Dallas. I have a feeling. Definitely have a feeling. And who knows? It probably could have been like ECW. Who knows? No. Oh, who knows? Just, yeah, who knows? But, anyways, it's a tragedy. And, um, yeah, simply put, that's my number 10. Um, I almost had this at, at my number 10, but I moved it off for one reason. Uh, my number 10 was, uh, oh no, my number 11, I should, I guess you could say, Hulk Hogan turning heel and joining and creating the NWO. Hmm. Yeah. That would have been good, but my number 10, my, I like to put number 10 as the, it, this is not like a best or worst, something like this, it's like controversial, but this one I had to put at 10 because, man, you want to talk about, like, bringing realism into the spotlight. I know what it is. You may not think you know what it is, but... The love triangle between Edge, Lita, and Matt Hardy. Can we do a segue? Because that's my number nine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is my number nine. This is his number ten. Wow. Okay. Um, first of all, there, if you watch Raw, I've never seen this. And even Edge was like, what the fuck was this? He was cursing like a man because Matt Hardy literally attacked him while they were walking their way up to the ring, you know, mm -hmm. backstage, how they do. And Adam Copeland, you know, known as Edge, went fucking furious. And even on, uh, they used to have a internet. Bite line. this. Bite this. And Lita was on, and people were like, is that really Matt Hardy? And it was. It was, yeah. That yeah, was interesting. <laughs> that was huge. Because uh, Matt Hardy and Amy Dumas, or Lita, they worked together. <laughs> Is that how you pronounce her last name? Dumas? Duma. Doom oh. The S is that's silent. Oh my god, that reminds me of uh <laughs> what Sasha Gang. Uh is like um by Alexander Dumbass. Dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> and Crystal. That's Crystal, you dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Dumas, excuse me. And that was actually him. Yeah. And they were together for real. And then all of a sudden, uh, Lita and Ed 
Edge had an affair, realistically, mm-hmm. and they actually end up bringing this and making it as a storyline for right. the WWE. So go ahead, you take it from there. All right, so Matt Hardy, yeah, like he said, Matt Hardy <laughs> charges Edge from behind. <laughs> What he fucking does like a linebacker tackle. <laughs> yeah, and then I think they, I think Edge had a match with Kane later that night, and Matt Hardy interrupted that. It's like Adam, you bastard, Amy, you whore. Um, the WWE can kiss my ass. <laughs> and what did Matt Hardy showed up in the ring? He's like Ring of Honor. He was like, he was like, I'll oh, Ring of Honor. Oh, wait. <laughs> Cut his mic. <laughs> And they eventually brought him back. They yeah. had they had their matches. Uh, one was at SummerSlam, which only lasted like four minutes or something. Because Matt Hardy was bleeding profusely. Well, they should have gave him a Z-Pack then. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe we'll mention Z-Packs a little later on. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, then their match at Unforgiven, the cage match, was so good. Oh, yeah. That cage match at Unforgiven 2005 was so good. So good. And to top it all off, the Money in the Bank ladder match between them at Raw Homecoming. Mm-hmm. On my Lita, birthday, nonetheless. Was it the match that Lita uh, locked Matt Hardy against the ropes and Edge went up and climbed yes. the ladder? Yes, that was on my birthday. Oh. That was on my 15th birthday. Can't believe it. That was one of the best Raws of all time. You know what? And you know when you think about this? They were building Edge up as this main magnificent heel. Mm-hmm. And guess who fucking buries him? Fuckhead! Oh, no, no, apple juice! Who the? 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 the? Who the? Who the? Who the? Who the? Who the? A rainbow cape, and he's wearing that fucking hat, that colorful, vibrant hat with that goddamn propeller spinning on the top, like Blue Bird Wars, Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Oh, God. <laughs> if he wears that, I swear to God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna laugh harder than I laughed at, at Mr. Garrison when he played Cat Mario. <laughs> Cat Mario. But. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Edge, talk. Matt Hardy, Lita. Oh man, Lita, what were you thinking? Honestly, you were happy with Matt Hardy. I know he was hurt. I know he was hurt. He wasn't. That led to her downfall. Yeah, pretty much. She didn't wrestle like. I think the next year she quit or something. Yeah, I don't want to say this, but you can tell that she was putting on weight. She wasn't looking as good. I remember when she came back for that that Raw special and. Oh, man, she was looking better than ever. I guess, you know, getting away from the WWE was mm-hmm. the best for her. Yeah. And it's the same, too, because her and Trish Stratus are my two all-time favorite divas. Yeah, Team Bestie. Hashtag Team Bestie. So, yeah, yeah, that's why that is his number 10, my number 9. What is your number 9? Number one, 9, I have a feeling this is going to be a lot higher. Number 9, number 9, number 9. You should never... When someone dies, you should leave them in peace. Never exploit it. Mm-hmm. Especially towards one of the greatest in my ten... We never done the, the... We did our favorites. We never did the greatest. In the ten greatest wrestlers of all time. Exploiting Eddie Guerrero's death. Yes. Okay. Uh, Rey Mysterio... The only reason why you won that Royal Rumble, the only reason why... You, you won the became, world title. You became the world champion. I'll scroll, scroll this up. It's because of Eddie Guerrero. Yep. Oh, you got me again, Eddie. You know, picking the fucking Larry balls or some shit. And then you have uh, fucking... Uh, uh, Orton? Randy Orton. You have Randy Orton saying, oh, yeah, Eddie's burning in hell. And I'm just like, what the fuck am I watching? That was messed up. at peace, folks. Do your tribute 
and let it go. Yep, exactly. But no, they have to exploit and make multiple uh, uh, storylines, all that kind of stupid, and I don't say stupid, but just like ridiculous shit. And Vince but, okayed this. Yeah. Wow. It's like, man, dumb old fuck. <laughs> That's my number nine. Exploiting Eddie Guerrero's death. Just uncalled for. Oh, it's a, absolutely uncalled for. The tribute show was great. And how uh, yes. uh, Alvaro Corral and Eric Ray Mysterio wanted to do that tribute match for Eddie. That was cool, too. Yes. Don't stretch it like they did. Come on, folks. Motherfuck, fuck boy, fuck head for that. Fuck boy, fuck head. Exactly. Um... Number eight, for me, is going to be um, something recent. Interesting. Something that happened last year, believe it or not. When you have one of the best walk out on your damn company. That's going to be a little bit The (laughs) Z-Pack. Freaking Z-Pack. CM Punk walks out on the WWE. And you know what, folks? Why is it controversial? I have no idea why. I'll tell you why. Because he did the right thing. Yes, he did the right thing. He let the people know why he did what he did. Yeah. Because, because... Because he was unhappy, and... Unhappy? He fucking damn near died. He damn near died. The damn medical staff nearly killed his ass. Oh, my God. That medical staff is a fucking... That, 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 that medical staff is a fucking disgrace when uh, his fiance at the time, I believe, AJ, goes to their medical staff and the doctors talk to him. He's like, dude, you had a fucking staph infection. I'm surprised you're still walking. Well, yeah, I'm surprised you're still alive. Uh, but, um, yeah, CM Punk, he was constantly pushed over for fuckboy Buckethead. Oh, fuck. Randy Boredom and... Who else was there? Oh, Roman Reigns, Batista uh, coming back. Oh, uh, right, uh, right back. <laughs> right back. <laughs> Did you ever hear his rebuttal? No. Oh boy. <laughs> no, what was it? He's just like, he's just like, he, uh, he's like, I didn't try to, I didn't try to hurt him, and you know, he actually got, you know, deep down and serious about it. But I believe CM Punk, man. Yeah, of course, you kind of have to. Feels it like it is. And he, he did, it's in my top five greatest <laughs> promo of all time. The pipe bomb. The, the original pipe bomb. <laughs> when I first saw this, I'm just like, this was not planned. This was from the heart. Yep. I remember watching this. I remember after it turned off, I was like, <laughs> did that really just happen? Oh, that was just fucked. I thought that was going to be the birth of the new era. I thought that was going to be the birth of a new era, like the new That's Attitude true. Era or something. And, you know, and we had the Summer Punk, just awesome. And then we no, no, tie- no. I That's my main gripe with that. Hold on a second. When he got his tire ring, guess what? He was booked as the fucking mid-carter. Mm-hmm. And he came back too soon. They rushed him back too soon. And the funny thing about it is, when he was defending the championship, uh... Uh, two of them were main events. One of them was involved with fucking Buck, and the other one was supposed to be. I believe that's how it went. Yep. Yeah. He had one of the best matches of the year with Dana Bryan. What was the next match? The main event? Uh, fucking, uh, uh, still like people against people power. <laughs> I'm going to be the worst main event ever. Oh. Oh, my God. That must, that film sucks. That film sucks. More ass in a fucking toilet at a Mexican restaurant, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him for walking out. Nope. Honestly, I really don't. I mean, if I were working for that kind of work environment, I'd oh, hightail it the first second. Well, there's been countless upon countless stories of people who, you know, and it's like what uh, Kenny Dystrick said. John Cena can do whatever he wants. Yep. Because he's Vince's fuck boy. He's golden. That's his golden boy. He's golden ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, simply put, you guys know the whole kit and caboodle about that whole thing. 
That's why it's my number eight. All right. My number eight, okay. Whoa, what was that? was that you or me? That was you. Oh, shit. I don't know what the hell that was. Uh, my number eight, okay. This happened in ECW. It is the mass transit incident. Oh, mass transit. <laughs> now, I forgot what the kids, the, the guy's name was. Okay. I don't know. This was at a, I think this was at, this was at a show on ECW. The house show. Part, yeah, and it was originally going to be Axl Rose and uh, uh, Devon Dugley versus uh, 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 Axl uh, Rotten. Uh, did I say Axl Rose? You no. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle. We got fun and games, oh, and I'm man. wrestling in ECW. And the brand is white as Dave is. We got a glass of barbed wire. Heavy chair shots. <laughs> exactly. Axel Rotten. Axel Rotten and New Jack versus Devon and someone New else. Jack, New Jack and, uh, oh, what were they called? The gangsta, uh The gangsters. Thank you. I forgot what his partner was. But Axel Rotten was a no-show, so ends up, here comes this one kid. 350 pounds. 350 pound says he's fucking, like 22 or something. A, a fucking t- 350 pound big old fat tidal wave titty tsunami looking dinner plate nipple fat some bitch. <laughs> okay, who claimed he was 19 years old and you know he was it was approved by his father and everything and he got the fucking shit annihilated by him. He even got so far as to having New Jack take this fucking blade and just blade it. Up. Fuck out of this guy. They did. I, oh, it was bad. They cut the like, shit out of him. Worst fucking, you know, like cuss I've ever seen. Here's the problem. The kid was not 19. He was 17 years old. He was 17. And, and he, he he had to write a contract. He wrote him contract himself. Yeah. Didn't they? A, a former kid said or something. Yes. The reason why ECW was let go is because he agreed to everything that was going to happen, uh-huh. and, for, and especially that blade job from New Jack. He, yep. called him he wanted it. He wanted it. He said he wanted to be cut open. Blade job? He doesn't need a blade job. He needs a fucking weight job. Get, your, more ass job. <laughs> get your fucking Get your fucking fat ass at 24-hour fitness or some shit and get your ass on a Nordic track or a treadmill. Jenny Craig. Get your ass in a sauna and wear a sweatsuit. <laughs> so that's my number eight, the mass transit that's, incident. That's mass transit. Have you seen that video? Oh, I have. Gruesome. I have seen that. That was absolutely <laughs> brutal. Awful. <laughs> All right. My number seven. We're at number seven, right? Uh, no. Uh, wait. You did, did you do your number eight? Yes, I did. Okay, I'm sorry. Mine was CM Punk. Oh, that's right. Okay. No. Yes. Number seven. I got that right. <laughs> yes, he got that right. <laughs> Surprisingly. Um, number seven for me is going to be something that the WWE was really reeling from back in the mid to late 90s. And to this day, they still get accused of it. The steroid trial. Interesting. Okay. The steroid trial. Back in 1994, Vince McMahon got litigated by the federal government because they thought he was giving his wrestler steroids. Right, and, you know, Hulk Hogan, you know, came out, you know, and said, hey, I never, you know, Vince McMahon never gave me steroids. But, you know, the funny thing is, I remember, like, uh, Hulk Hogan throughout the entire time, he says he only took his steroids three times for, like, injuries, Mm -hmm. and yet... Uh, even in the movie, uh, if you've never seen this documentary, this is, I love this documentary. It's called Bigger, Stronger, Faster. Bigger, Stronger, Faster, Asterix. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and asterisk. Asterisk. <laughs> and, oops, sorry about that. Here we go. And, basically, that movie even showed that, hey, Hulk Hogan testified, yes. The reason mm-hmm. why he got so big is because of the, the, you know, saying your prayers, eating your vitamins. And working and out. Home. You know, yo, well, yeah, he was working out, but he had a little help. It was called testosterone. Yep. <laughs> and then you have guys like... Um, um, Superstar Billy Graham. Coming out, and Billy Jack Hayes, oh. and... Uh, 
bunch of other people saying, yeah, man, I inject steroids, he injects steroids in me. I'm just like, fuck. I inject Hulk Hogan with steroids. <laughs> yeah, look at Super Saiyan Billy Graham. The guy who, who has some of the, he was like one of the biggest, buffest dude. Now he's fucking barely walking. Now he can barely walk because he was doing steroids. Oh, up the ass. Look how huge he was. Yeah, and look at him now. He's fucking, yeah. Look at him now. Look what it. Look what that stuff does. But 1994, Vince McMahon goes to trial for the federal government, and they almost put his ass in jail. Oh yeah. Can you imagine that? If the WWF would have died, we would have WCW. Yeah, pretty much. Well, I don't know. Could that be for the best or for the worst? Because WCW in the 90s, man. Oh my God, they were awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but if Vince did go to jail. What would have happened? Yeah. What do you, you think? Know funny, yeah. Oh, but you know what the funny thing is? What's that? The top guys, you know, during the golden years up to the steroid scandal was Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior. Randy Savage. You know, and Randy Savage, you know, big guys. In the mid-90s, it was Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Yep, Razor Ramon, Diesel. You know, I mean, just look at Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Look at the size comparison compared to those. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with Hulk Hogan. Folks, look what he looked like in 87 to 90, and then look what he looked like when he returned at, um, in 1993 at uh, uh, at WrestleMania. Huge difference. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, oh, yeah. So, it really, it really does question yourself. What would have happened if Vince went to jail? What do you think would have happened? You know what? There's a saying, money talks and bullshit walks, and he's mm. so and he's got so much goddamn money, he could probably buy his way out of it. Yeah, but he'll probably get still. like minimal security. Yeah, that's true. Minimal security prison and yeah, slap on the wrist, get the fuck slap out of here. Slap on the wrist, you know, maybe a little ankle lock, all that bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's why the steroid trial in 1994 is my number seven. Uh, my number seven, even when this one particular superstar, 